In the late 1990s, a reluctant trip to England with my mom takes a perilous turn when a drunken intruder terrorizes our hotel room. With no means of escape, I endure a night of relentless threats and violence while my mom remains strangely silent. Discover the shocking twist that leaves me questioning not only the events of that night but also my mother's mysterious indifference. In the late 1990s, I found myself accompanying my mom on a journey to England, a trip inspired by her desire to trace the roots of her grandparents. The decision to accompany her was somewhat reluctant on my part. My dad had opted out of the journey, leaving me as the de facto caregiver, a role I had come to embrace since my mom often struggled to manage things on her own. Our initial plan had been to spend one week in England and the following week in Ireland. However, my mom's propensity for disorganized planning soon became evident. We ended up in Liverpool, waiting for the turbulent Irish Sea to settle down so we could embark on a ferry to Ireland. This delay, occurring in the unfortunate month of September, dashed our hopes of reaching Ireland. For five days, I found myself scrambling to secure nightly accommodations. It was only then that I discovered my mom had made no hotel reservations for our entire two-week stay, a fact that had eluded me until our arrival in England. In an attempt to provide some semblance of stability, I selected a hotel that seemed reasonably suitable. My mom, grappling with restless leg syndrome RLS, that caused violent nighttime tremors, chose to sleep in a separate room. During our stay, one ominous night, I was rudely awakened by a drunken man's enraged outbursts echoing through the hallway. He pounded on doors, struck walls, and disturbed the entire floor. Acting on my impulsive teenage instincts, I shouted at him to quiet down, a decision I would soon regret. The man turned his fury towards me, ferociously attacking my door and vowing to harm me. I was immensely grateful for the automatic lock on the door, as he tried in vain to force it open. Panicking, I surveyed the room for a way to seek help. To my horror, the hotel room lacked a phone, and the windows were inoperable. Trapped three stories above the ground, I could only listen as the man relentlessly battered my door and continued to threaten me. This nerve-wracking ordeal dragged on for what felt like an eternity, at least twenty agonizing minutes. Miraculously, exhaustion overcame my fear, and I eventually fell asleep amidst the chaos. Upon waking up the next day, the full extent of the damage became evident. The man had breached my room with a stolen fire extinguisher, leaving a trail of dents and destruction along the hallway. Astonishingly, my mom, who was in a room down the hall, had never intervened or even uttered a word during the horrifying incident. As we checked out of the hotel, I reported the night's events to the clerk, expecting sympathy or at least acknowledgement of the damage. Instead, he regarded me with skepticism, as if my account were a fabrication. I insisted that he inspect the hallway for himself, and when he did, the disbelief on his face transformed into shock. Later, I questioned my mom about her peculiar silence during the ordeal. She nonchalantly replied, Oh yeah, I thought I heard screaming. Was that you crying for help? It was a response that left me both flabbergasted and, in some ways, more bewildered than the harrowing night itself. In the heart of Dumbo, Brooklyn, a seemingly idyllic apartment becomes a nightmarish den of terror as a tenant discovers their landlord's dark and twisted secrets. Beneath the veneer of luxury lies a chilling web of obsession and danger, leading to a harrowing battle for survival. This is a tale of how a simple decision to move can unleash unimaginable horrors in a seemingly ordinary building. The decision to leave my Dumbo, 
Brooklyn apartment wasn't an easy one, but it was a choice I had to make. At first, I was drawn to the charming apartment thanks to my roommate, whose parents generously covered most of the rent. Our landlords, seemingly a sweet couple, live just a few floors above us with their children. On the surface, it all appeared fine. However, things took a sinister turn when I started encountering their children in the elevator. Each time they saw me, they would let out blood-curdling screams and then vanish into thin air. Initially, I tried to pass it off as youthful exuberance, but it didn't take long for their eldest son, who seemed to be around my age, to join in the unsettling behavior. I attempted to dismiss it, thinking it was just siblings playing pranks. But one day, I had a chilling conversation with the family. Out of nowhere, the father, his eyes devoid of emotion, apologized for his son's strange antics, attributing it to him being, in his own words, different. He followed this with a derogatory term referring to individuals with mental disabilities, sending shivers down my spine. A few nights later, I found myself alone in the elevator with the father once more. I kept my distance, my heart pounding in my chest. He spoke, his words laced with a sinister charm, praising the apartment's allure and emphasizing his generosity for offering us such a low rent. Then, with a chilling smile, he dropped an unexpected proposition, he asked if I could babysit his children while he and his wife, along with their eldest son, went out for dinner. I initially declined, but he countered with an offer of $150 per hour. My greed got the better of me, and I reluctantly agreed. Upon entering their apartment, I was struck dumb. It was a sprawling, opulent space that occupied the entire floor, an unsettling juxtaposition to our modest living quarters. For the first hour, everything appeared normal as I engaged in games with the children. But suddenly, the front door slammed shut. Investigating, I found the father stumbling around, clearly intoxicated. He approached me with a predatory look in his eyes, making lewd comments and disturbing propositions. I quickly assisted him and, once the wife arrived, she paid me without explanation, thanking me for my services and urging me to leave. As I exited, I was in a state of bewildered shock, unable to comprehend the nightmare I had just endured. Back in my apartment, I confided in my roommate, who shared a disturbing encounter of her own with the father. He had casually mentioned, my wife is cool, just so you know, with no context before abruptly leaving. It was clear that something sinister was at play with our landlords, and we were resolved not to renew our lease. We didn't see our landlords for a while, until one chilling elevator ride with my boyfriend. They went quiet, their eerie smiles plastered on their faces, nodding repeatedly as we exited. The father even winked at me, sending shivers down my spine. By this point, my roommate and I were thoroughly unnerved, so I asked my boyfriend to stay with us for the remainder of our lease. The most unsettling encounter occurred just days before our scheduled move-out. My roommate ventured out of the apartment to find both landlords waiting by the elevators. Their eyes were bloodshot, and they began sobbing upon seeing her, pleading with us to stay. Their explanation left us speechless, they had mistaken us for the pretty young girls they had been expecting. My roommate hurried back to the apartment, trembling, and called me, sharing the nightmarish encounter. Almost immediately, the landlords began knocking frantically at our door. When my boyfriend answered, they inquired if I was home, and despite his denial, they attempted to force their way in. I intervened, my voice trembling with fear as I threatened to call the police, which finally prompted them to retreat. As if that wasn't unsettling enough, a few days later, we received a cryptic text message from an unknown number, 
offering us six months of free rent in exchange for just a few nights. We promptly blocked and deleted the number. Living in that apartment had become an increasingly harrowing ordeal, especially knowing that our landlords had unrestricted access to our living space. It was a profound relief when we finally escaped the clutches of that nightmarish place.